We're in Clarksdale, Mississippi today to show you some Mississippi heritage sites whose story needs to be told. There was a thriving shopping and entertainment district extending along 4th Street and up Isquina Avenue. Black-owned businesses and churches lined the streets alongside businesses owned by Chinese, Jewish, Russian, Polish, Greek, Syrian, Lebanese, and Italian merchants. The New World District title derives in part from the name of a salon near 4th and Isquina owned by Nelson Jones. It was called Nelson Jones' New World. For many immigrants who now called Clarksdale home, this was once a new world. W.C. Handy, the father of the blues, lived in the neighborhood. And many great blues musicians stayed in the Green Book-listed Riverside Hotel. They played at juke joints like Wade's Barbershop and Lounge, the Casanova, Club Champagne, the Blue Den, J.J.'s, the Dipsy Doodle, and of course, the Red Top Lounge. Running from Vicksburg to Chicago, the tracks that this station served formed a de facto separation between black and white Clarksdale residents. It was at this station where Muddy Waters boarded the train to Chicago during the Great Migration. On August 23, 1961, Mary Jane Piggy, Adrian Beard, and Wilma Jones entered the whites-only waiting room attempting to buy a ticket to Memphis. They were arrested and charged with intent to disturb the peace. They were only 18, 16, and 14 years old. The station was desegregated later that year. A WPA project in 1955, the Civic Auditorium, held a membership meeting of the White Citizens Council, a supremacy group founded by Clarksdale native Robert Patterson. In 1961, it became the site for several protests against segregation, which brought attention to the Clarksdale Civil Rights Movement. This is the Greyhound Bus Terminal. In the fall of 1961, civil rights activists Vera Mae Piggy and Odessa Johnson conducted a sit-in at the whites-only area of the bus station. They were met by police. They came back again and again, and on December 27, 1961, Clarksdale police removed the segregation signs. The bus terminal is now home to a wing stop, owned by Clarksdale native rapper Rick Ross. This theater was opened as the Marion Theater in 1918 and became the Paramount in 1931. It closed in 1976. The entrance to the segregated balcony, the back alley stairs, are still visible. Civil rights activists picketed the theater in the 1960s, and it was desegregated in 1965. Woolworths, located in this building, was an anchor for downtown businesses and had a classic 27-stool lunch counter. Irene Lloyd and Myra Jones planned a demonstration here in 1960, but rather than integrate, the store closed its lunch counter in 1963. There's not much left of Vera Mae Piggy's Beauty Salon, but it was once a safe place for civil rights activities, organizing, and shelter. Miss Piggy, along with other members of the SNCC and the NAACP, met and taught literacy classes to local residents in an effort to increase African-American voter registration. Wade Walton's barbershop was both a barbershop and a lounge. In addition to being a business owner, barber, and well-known bluesman, Wade Walton was also a charter member of Clarksdale's branch of the NAACP. Aaron Henry, a Clarksdale pharmacist, was a major early grassroots activist in the civil rights movement. As a local NAACP president, he led the early 1960s Clarksdale boycott campaign, during which he was arrested and his home and pharmacy were firebombed. At the 1964 National Democratic Convention, he headed the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party delegation, challenging the seating of the all-white delegation. Later, as a Mississippi legislator, he worked to build a strong interracial state Democratic Party. And he met here in his drugstore with one of my favorite Mississippi newspaper guys, Curtis Wilkie. The Clarksdale area is famed for its many legendary blues artists who achieved their greatest success after moving away, such as Muddy Waters, Ike Turner, and John Lee Hooker. But there were world-renowned musicians who remained lifelong residents, and foremost among these was Big Jack Johnson.
Big Jack was one of the most creative guitarists and lyricists in the blues. When not on tour, Johnson considered Red's Blues Club at this site his home base. Built by a Syrian immigrant, A.N. Rossi Sr., the new Roxy Theater opened in 1949 and was a popular African-American movie theater until 1981. It was known for showing westerns, dramas, and black exploitation films. New Roxy is now being restored as an open-air venue for live music, film, and community events and it's open seasonally. Previously, the G.T. Thomas Afro-American Hospital, where Bessie Smith died in 1937, the Riverside Hotel was transformed into a hotel by Mrs. Z.L. Ratliff in 1944. Ike Turner was living here when he and fellow Clark's Daly and Jackie Brinston recorded the first rock and roll song, Rocket 88, in 1951. It was a safe space for traveling musicians and became a community hub and the most blues historic hotel in the world. The hotel sits on the Sunflower River that has seen the best and worst of Clarksdale. The river was used by African American churchgoers for baptisms in both the 19th and the 20th century. On September the 19th, 1919, L.B. Reed, a returning Black Army veteran from the American Expeditionary Forces, was hanged here for allegedly dating a white woman. This followed the red summer of 1919 when thousands of African Americans were beaten and murdered throughout the United States. That particular bridge has since been replaced by other bridges built in the 1930s as part of the WPA program. As we finish up, I hope you've enjoyed your visit with Clarksdale Heritage today, and I encourage you to come visit the Delta Blues Museum and Clarksdale Heritage for yourself sometime. Thank you.